Well, here we are. First episode of something totally new, Le Pod. Do you like that? You like I what like we've done there? That's nice play on words, that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's very yeah. good. Whose idea was that? Well, I can't take credit for that. Are you not? No. Nah. It's good, though. Why not? All right, then it was mine. Pick it. All mine. <laughs> no one yeah, over there is going to say anything. Yeah. Take it. You like it, Ricky? I, I do, mate, yeah. I've got nothing to do with my name, but... <laughs> no, you're in there, the small yeah. bit, look. All right, Underneath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ewan Thomas, and with me, we've got Ricky Lambert and, of course, Le God. Yes, Le Tizier, and we're going to be talking all things football. And today, we're talking debuts, being our first show. But I've got to start with a confession, stroke, apology, stroke, something that's been eating away at me for about 10 years. Oh. And it involves you, Matt. What have I done? You haven't done anything. <laughs> oh, um, what have so, you done? I've done something that, honestly, it's really bugged me. Like, whether I should mention it to you, whether I shouldn't, whether you even noticed. Really? So about 10 years ago, I'm in a park near West End, and I'm doing a photo shoot for a local charity thing, and my dog at the time, I think you might know him, I had a dog, yellow lab, brilliant, little yeah. Freddy, and he had a thing for fox poo, right? And he liked to roll in it. And basically, <laughs> literally ran off. He came back and I patted the dog and I was like, what, on, what is that? And everyone around me within literally a 20 meter radius was, what the hell? It just stink. And I turned around and you just appeared from nowhere. You literally, and you walked towards me and you put your hand out like you and how are you? And I had like a split moment to do the right thing and say, Matt, <laughs> oh, I've got fox no. poo on my hand. No. I can't shake your hand. But for some reason, I just thought, you can't not shake Matt's hand. So I just went, how are you? And I don't even know if you noticed, but the smell was so bad. And quite quickly, you made a polite kind of excuse and said, well, nice to see you. And you wandered off. I might have done. I might have noticed. Do you remember it? I, you, no, I, I, I do remember seeing it, but I don't remember the smell, actually. Oh, maybe you just but thought you it was see, me. When, when, your nose is, just when your nose is as crooked as mine, you don't tend to notice smells that much. So I don't you're telling me I've worried about this for like 10 years. No, you don't have about it. You didn't have to worry. Honestly, you got away fine. Do you think I did the right thing, though, Ricky? Because I literally was like, "Do I? I should have just." To be said, honest, I think I uh, if, I was in your, if I was in your shoes, I would have probably gone. Do you know what? I, I smell a poo. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch my hand. Yeah. So yeah. what happened Good. after that moment? Well, I, I was Matt went and literally I said to everyone, "I can't believe I shook his hand. <laughs> smell my hand," and everyone was like, "It's disgusting." <laughs> but I, I thought it was a right, not the right thing to do, but it just happened. Yeah. I literally had a second. To decide. I mean, your hand probably smelled better than your aftershave. That's probably <laughs> that's what it was. That's probably what it was. <laughs> that was an improvement. <laughs> right, let's talk debuts then. Obviously, this has been our first show. Ricky, do you remember that far back? First debut? <laughs> I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Do you remember God, what I, club it was? Give us a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I can remember coming on a sub for Blackpool. That was my... Um, that You can say that's my debut, but the first start... It was from Macclesfield, but I can't I can't remember which game it was. I get mixed up. These are a few games. Did you score? Or you can't no, remember? No, centre midfielder got brought off at half time. What on your debut? Yeah. No. Yeah, he played me and another uh young lad in, in midfield, Woolly, and we were both terrible. We were three 0 down at half time. Oh, I no. got dragged. <laughs> What's that doing for your mentality? You brought on, you thought this is it and you get taken off. Yeah. 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 Did did knock her a little bit. Did knock her. I was playing centre mid as well. I, looking back, I was never a centre mid, mate, but that's that's the position I was playing. Deary me. Matt, yeah. tell me yours was heroic. Mm -hmm. Did you score? Not really. Um, I I was on the bench like Ricky. Uh, my first appearance, I was a uh, sub against Norwich at Carrow Road. Um, we were 3-2 down with 15 minutes to go. And Chris Nickel threw me on for my debut and I came on and I actually changed the game. We lost better. four three. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So everything you expect so, as a young lad. Do you know? I don't remember too much about that. It was like a very brief, fleeting appearance. So that was on the Saturday, but I, I made my full debut on the on the Tuesday night following. So we played at home to Spurs, and I remember a, a bit more about that game. Good. Was it good? Yeah. I, I played all right. I, I remember setting. Danny Wallace up for an absolute sitter and he missed it. I was gutted. It would have been my first ever hand in a goal in the first division. Uh, I, I, I controlled this ball. Mark Blake played a ball out of the wing. It was kind of going over my shoulder and going out of play. And I was facing the crowd. And I've hooked it. I've got my right foot up and I've hooked it back into play just before it went out of play. Cut inside the fullback and played a lovely little reverse pass in for Danny. Ran him behind and he was one-on-one -on -one against Ray Clements, I think was in goal for Spurs that day. And uh, he sat him down. He dummied him. The keeper went down. I thought, oh, here we go. He's just going to roll it in. Rolls it straight to the side netting. I was oh. like, oh, my God. Can you criticise when you're in that position? Can you say to him... Let, no, I was 17 years of age. Danny Wallace was a no legend. Chance. You can't even just I say I couldn't even go, what no the chance. hell are you playing at, Dan? 
No, you can't. You can't do that. <laughs> no. He didn't do it on purpose. You know what I mean? You can't, yeah, yeah. You can't be having a pop at people there. Was but you, but was, I did all right. Did you have the nerves? Can you remember the nerves that you had on the bench before the game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It used to make sure. me feel sick how nervous I was at that age, being on the bench. And then when he said, when it was like, Ricky! It was like, oh Ooh. my word. Was, what, so uh, when you get the guy and warm up, that's when the nerves start or they settle? Uh, not, not so much when you're warming up, when you actually get the call. Like I when he gives you, you the when finger, you know you're going say, on. you're going get, on. Get, get it started. I can still remember that, like, uh, yeah, I proper, proper uh, crap myself there. <laughs> and the nerves, for the first five minutes, you just it's just adrenaline. You're just running it's around mental, like an endless chicken, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. And but the nerves is good, down. is it not? You need the nerves to yeah. get the best out well, of yourself. Well, at that age, that intensity is too much. That was, in, that was too much because, like I said, you just run around like a madman. I can't imagine you running around like a headless chicken, <laughs> if I'm honest. I mean, I never had that, to be honest. Yeah, it only lasted five minutes. <laughs> I think I had to come off after six. So when you see youngsters nowadays, like academy players or something like that, getting their chance in the first team... Do you feel for them? Do you think, I know what he's feeling, the nerves must be horrendous? Or do you think, fair play, yeah, you're good enough, mate, you're old enough? Any any young kid who comes on for his debut, you're just praying that it goes well. Or, quite, like, not on happens, isn't it? It's, yeah, if you, something you bad happens it. on a debut, it can it can knock a young kid. It, yeah. it can be damaging. You don't want to miss a sitter or give the ball away and it leads to a goal at the other no. end. That's just a horrible feeling no. as a young kid. Because you know, as the youngster in the team, any mistakes, and if the manager wants to make a change to the team, you're the one that is going to be changing. Yeah. Um, so it's so it's like quite a lot of quite a lot of pressure. I was quite lucky. So I spent first couple of years of my career at the Dell. I was sub a lot, but um, I had a really good start. And the fans, every time I went out to warm up, it, it was just amazing. The fans just went mental, and they were like just wanting the gaffer to, to stick me on the pitch. Yeah. It was So for me, as a 17-year-old, as a 18-year-old, it was just a magnificent... And sometimes the manager didn't even tell me to go warm up. I was just like, yeah, I want to do this. <laughs> I'm just going to go and run down the... Run down the you end. never used to warm up just anyway, get did you? a bit of a cheer. Did you warm up anyway? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the, in the old days, I used to warm up. I say warm up. I used to just run down to the corner flag, a couple of stretches, run back up again. Did no one ever take you then? Any senior players at that time when you, you know, they can see you doing well in training, you're about to make your debut any day now. Do they sort of take you around the side and say, you're going to be all right, just do yeah. what you do in training? Yeah, a, few, a few players yeah. that said, you like, calm down, you'll be fine. Just The best advice was probably just do what you do when you're training with us every day. That's why you're, that's why you're in the team. Yeah. It, it does calm you down a little bit, to be fair. It's, it's, I think that, that kind of... Um, advice from someone who you look look up to is definitely definitely the right thing to do and it, it definitely does help. How about people you've played with over the years? Remember any disastrous debuts or some really good ones? Well, I can't think of any disastrous ones. <laughs> so what comes just to my head straight away, to be honest. I remember seeing um, other people, team, uh, other teams and players who were having, having debuts and having stinkers, but... In my team, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head who's had an absolute stinker. I can. <laughs> um, I, I was obviously at the club when uh, Ali Deer made his one and only appearance for the oh, yes. football club. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. He actually made two appearances in one day, um, his first and his last. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was quite incredible. Um, we, we'd actually watched him in training like the day before, and I was like, what's this bloke doing here? <laughs> he was, I thought he'd won a competition. Could you tell? To Straight actually, away, yeah. yeah, he wasn't the best. He wasn't the best, honestly. You just, you know, like some people, you watch some people on a football pitch and you just go, oh yeah, I can see. Yeah. Not not a bit of it was like going, <laughs> what, what's he got? What's he got in his locker? You know what I mean? And then he obviously came on as a sub and then got substituted himself um, and is widely regarded as the worst footballer to play in the Premier League. Um, the only embarrassing bit about that was when he came on as a sub, it was me that went off. Uh, oh, dear. So, yeah, I have the dubious <laughs> distinction of the, the man who was subbed for the worst player in the Premier League history. Remind people of the story behind it, because didn't he claim he was George he Weir's cousin? He claimed he was George something? Weir's yeah. cousin, yeah. Well, there was a phone call came into the training ground, um, apparently from George Weir, uh, left a message for Graham Sooners. So Graham return the call after training and um, yeah he just said this this kid's my cousin I think he's a really good player I think you should have a look at him I think he'd do a job for you <laughs> did, did he get <laughs> and a contract? and it just happened no no it, it, I, he didn't, I don't think he got a contract um, 
but it just happened we'd had about two or three injuries that week to our forward players and he just happened <laughs> to be at the right place at the right time right. and we had literally no other forwards to put on the bench and so that's how he got onto the, the sub bench yeah it was it was incredible seen footage of it he, he, he went to header he couldn't even header the ball he had a right good chance to score as well and f- ball flashed across the goalie I think he took an air shot or something yeah. <laughs> it's just like wow so surely in training you lot you saw nothing about him I, did, I didn't Why see did bring anything him about him I didn't see well we had no other forwards he was the only forward I think on the bench and I, and I got injured um, uh, and it was just and circumstances just I mean you couldn't have that in this in this day and age uh, where everything's a little bit more professional than it might have been no, 25 years you would, you would years never have done that. bring a player in just off the back of someone saying do us a favour no <laughs> he's a decent player no, no. give him a chance no no chance no chance so that was the that was the worst debut I think I, I probably ever saw the one what comes to my mind and I think you would know you would agree Will Gates for Real Madrid. Oh, Real Madrid, yeah, yeah. He gets sent off and score an own goal in the yeah. same game, didn't he? Yeah, and then he got injured as well, didn't he? Or no, was that no? That's a that's the next game. Um, but yeah, he had a he scored an own goal and then got sent off. I had that's quite a disastrous debut for my um, when I played for the England B, my first ever cap for the England B team. Um, I think I was only about twenty or twenty-one, and there was like building up to the nineteen ninety World Cup. Uh, and Bobby Robson did a B team to have a look at some players and um, we went and played in the Republic of Ireland and we turned up at this pitch honestly it was like a ploughed field it did not suit the way that I like to play football you know I, I'd like a nice carpet to play on this ploughed field and the Republic of Ireland players absolutely loved it the weather was horrible and it was just a shock it and we got beat 4-1 by the Republic of Ireland, and it was just like so embarrassing. We did not get in anywhere near their 18 yard box the whole game. I never said to you, then you get the call, you think this is my chance to I'm, show. I know, I'm absolutely gutted. <laughs> I'm like, I, I was having a great season for Southampton, I scored loads of goals, and I was like, and then he's playing this game, and it's just like, I couldn't get a kick, could not get a kick. It was just horrific. I just remember coming off the pitch at the end of it going, oh, I ain't never playing for England after that. <laughs> Shocking. My Your word. debut for England wasn't bad, though, was it? <laughs> it, was, yeah, it was okay. That was probably, um, yeah, that's obviously the best moment of my career for it to, to happen two minutes after coming on. You know I mean? Wow, that was incredible. It was, yeah, um, you don't get much better debuts than that, to be honest. And I, the, the, the thing is, I probably scored, could have scored the trick as well. When you get the call saying, you know, you've been chosen to represent your country, what was that like? Yeah, unbelievable. I think it's well written that it was on my um, my baby girl's ba- uh, day she was born. Um, I had no idea that I would I was in the squad at first until a few hours later, um, and then obviously getting there, mate. Yeah, and playing with your idols. I, I've told Matt this uh, many a time. It was just a surreal week, um, all leading up to the game. Then the game started, and it was unbelievable game. Unbelievable. Back and forth. Just remind people who it was against. Scotland. So our rivals. Um, <laughs> Not just any old team. S- Scotland play well, by the way. They were they were a better team for about 70 minutes, 60 minutes. Um, and then 2-2, two, two, about 15 minutes left. Um, Gary Neville's finally called me over. But my, the way I was speaking before, when I was my first uh, debut... Yeah, I was a completely different person this time. I was absolutely, I couldn't wait to get on the pitch. Uh, the The nerves were under control. The excitement was still there and the nerves were still there, but everything was under control. And I just couldn't wait to get on, onto the pitch because I felt like I was going to explode, to be honest. It was, <laughs> I, it, I was that like, um, like pumped up. I just couldn't wait to get on the pitch. An amazing moment as well, not just for your family and people who've helped you through your career, but Southampton fans as well, seeing someone they see week in, week out, getting their chance. Well, I've, I've, I've spoke to so many um, Southampton fans who say that, that they've never been to an England game, but the, that was the one game that they've been to um, and they managed to see it. And not just Southampton fans, all, all fans, all the teams that I've played for and, and even teams that I haven't played for, they said, like they've pulled me to one side and said that's their favourite moment 
watching England. Um, and I think it was to do with just the story and the background of how, how I got there and how long it took me to get there. And then to score the winner, it was just, it was just like I said, surreal. And it's, I think it's every, every boy's dream to do that. And to, to, to live through it, mate, yeah, it was incredible. Talk us through the goal then, come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knew I was going to score. Didn't know how I was going to score, but I just knew I was going to score at some point. Um, <laughs> two minutes in, I hadn't touched the ball yet. Just ran round. Um, Leighton Baines is taking the corner. So I'm, I'm getting marked by Scott Brown. And I'm thinking if this ball comes anywhere near me, I'm I'm You've winning Scott it. Brown yeah. and I'm I'm gonna score a goal. And then perfect corner right onto my head. Managed to lose uh Brown. And it's one of the best heads I've ever done in my life. Honest <laughs> to God, it's, it's right where you want it to, to connect with your forehead. And it's the corner I've aimed for as well. And just to see it at the back of the net, mate, was was incredible. I was that close to taking my top off, which <laughs> which r- would have ruined the whole thing. The whole thing. Did um, you not have a six pack then? No, definitely Did you didn't. Not? No. Um, yeah, white body, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> it was it, it was what dreams are made of as a kid. You know, the, the journey that he went through to get himself into that position was just incredible. I mean, we were lucky that five years of that was at our football club, where he he, he dragged us up from. League One into the Premier League, and uh, and for for him, I mean, me as a as an England fan, I've been, you know, I I watch every England game I can, and I've watched them since I was a kid. I've never celebrated. I mean, perhaps Kieran Trippier's free kick in the in the semi final last yeah. year, I went a bit mental, but I don't think apart, there's nothing else apart from that goal that equaled the celebration I had when when he come on and scored that goal against Scotland, it was just incredible. My house, I just went mental. I was sat on my own as well. I was going mad. <laughs> <laughs> I, me- I remember, all my mates remember afterwards the doing the interview um, on the pitch and he, he was just saying what I was being the week and stuff like that. And I literally, he was interviewing me there. I had about 50 of my friends and family, literally 20 yards there in the stand. <laughs> And it almost got too much for me. I was I almost, started, say, it's emotional, al- al- it? almost yeah. started crying on camera, and I was trying my best to, to 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 keep it in. It was yeah, it was such a surreal experience, which uh, I, was was it was incredible, mate, and um, to share it with my friends. And I was trying to get. I wish I could have said a lot more in that interview, but I did get out the principle of I thank Southampton, and I, I, to this day it was. I've, I kind of begin to explain how, how, how much Southampton done, but I'm glad I, st- I got it out when it needed to come out. Like I, I gave a big thank you to Southampton and everything they have done to it for me. Memories it will live with you forever. It clearly does. Both of you, you know, you've done so much in your careers, and it's nice to look back at it. Yeah, oh, no, for sure, for yeah. sure. But you, you must know how it feels. You must have your first major tournament, the the nerves and everything that you, yeah. you went through. I think you would have must have, you must have sport, felt all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, in any sport you work really hard, don't you? And people don't see the amount of training that goes into it. Yeah. So when you do get that phone call or you go to a major championship, you're like, it's almost a little bit surreal. I remember mm. for me in my first Olympics, it was just mad. You're in the dinner hall and that Magic Johnson walks in and then it might have a four foot <laughs> gymnast from China or something. So you've got all these different shapes and sizes and it's almost like a bit of a freak show, but it is. You have to pinch yourself and think, yeah. I'm just a lad from Southampton. I'm now sitting amongst people I've seen on TV and stuff. But When you got to the Olympics, was was it a little bit like what I explained? Was your emotions all over the place? But was you able to control it or did the was the nerves... Did, did nerves get the better of you at any point in your career? Yeah, definitely nerves do, but I always used to try and channel those nerves and think to myself, you know, if I'm nervous, I look around, the other seven in the final must be just as nervous as me. Yeah. And I thought, mm. you only get one chance, you know, one lap of the track for me. If I mess it up, I've got to wait a whole year to the following year to the next major championships. I suppose the difference with football, you've got the next Saturday, haven't you? So if you have a yeah. bit of a shocker, you know you can score yeah. next week. Yeah. With the major championships, they don't come around very often, but... No, it's awesome. You know, all of us, you know, being able to do something we love doing. Mm, yeah. Even as a youngster, you must have loved playing football, same as me. I used to love running. So it's it's just great to be able to do something you love. Yeah. yeah. No. I used to love running. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, did you, you must when have done 400 pre-season and stuff. 
You, oh, you, yeah. you like used to go down the sports centre, I've I, seen I you. hated them 400 yeah. metre runs. I didn't know how you boys did that. That's a horrible distance to yeah. run. It hurts. Yeah. Horrible distance. Yeah, I hate it. That's the one thing I couldn't do. I mean, I oh. couldn't do any run, to be honest. But the one, the one thing I found the hardest was the, like, the one lap, two laps, three laps. It was... Nah. It's a different fitness. Yeah. You guys are all about 10 yards, and you stop, start, stop, mm. start. It's different. I came into it... So I began, and it was all, like... Um, laps mile runs and six mile runs and then at the back end of my career it was it was specific to football mm. and it, i wish obviously my first part of the career was like that because i would have benefited because i was so bad at running so bad honestly that's why my career and my professionalism was really bad as well so a mixture of that i just i just couldn't run even when i was at my fittest the fittest i was terrible at running i'll always be at the back and running but I knew in myself I was fit. I would never try and class myself as the rest of the lads. Mm. Yeah, I the, thought most footballers could run all day. I thought it was not a parcel of it. Not on this couch. <laughs> 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 no. No. I, I didn't I didn't mind I didn't mind hard work. And um and people have, have always accused me of being lazy. But I would work all day if I had a football at my feet. You could get me doing running all day as long as I'm dribbling past something, mm. and it and I wouldn't and I wouldn't get tired. The minute you take the ball away, something in my head there's a switch in my head that goes, "Nah, this is boring. Yeah. I'm not having this." It is boring, and it and it, <laughs> and it just doesn't you don't get the same intensity in it, and that's why I was like Ricky. I was always always at the back, but I used to I used to say to a manager in pre season because I used to hate the running. Uh, so I just used to say to the manager, play me in every preseason game. Play me 90 minutes in every game. And that's how I get my fitness. Because if I'm on a football pitch, I'll go and, I'll go and chase the ball around and I'll, I'll keep going. As long as there's a ball there, I want to play. And and so I just used to get my fitness that way. And I just, the preseason training, the manager just used to write me off and go, yeah, he's at the back. He's always going to be at the back. There's nothing I can do about it. So, Ricky, you said on your debut you were full of nerves. It affected you. If you could rewind the clock now, what would you tell a young Ricky Lambert who's about to come on? Calm down, mate. Calm down. <laughs> like, just do exactly what you've been doing, the youth team and the reserves. And just when you get your chance, just do the exact same. And Matt, just... any advice for any youngsters? Yeah, I mean, looking back at, at, at my debut, I mean, I, I would have been nervous on all my debuts. Um, so you know, for the youth team, for the reserves, for the first team, for for England B, for for England. Um, I mean, looking back now, I think I would probably reassure myself a, a little bit more that do you know what you, you are good enough to play at this level, uh, and believe in yourself a, a, a little bit more. Because I think when I, when you first start, there's always that nagging doubt that you just think, okay, I'm doing all right at this level, but when I go up a level, am I going to be all right? Am I as good as those guys? Mm. And that's kind of the one thing that you kind of have a nagging doubt about. I think if you get to that level, the manager believes in you, the rest of your teammates believe in you, you should believe in yourself a little bit more even before you've you've gone out and do it. Yeah, the step the step up is not as big as what you think it is in your head at the time. Mm. It's always easy to say afterwards. But I can remember going up the, the leagues and I always thought the Premier League was a distant land that you couldn't even touch and smell let alone get to so when I got there and then we were beating teams it's it's obviously it's that must have been a huge boost for you though you know when you've made your first your first game in the Premier League which by the way I've never still never forgiven Nigel for putting you on the bench against Man City that day no. um, <laughs> I don't know no, if you I, no, no I haven't <laughs> and he knows it as well to be honest but then you <laughs> then you come on at half time and like it was only a few minutes after half time wasn't it and you get your yeah. first chance and you just pop it in the corner that must have just been for you just yeah. a moment where you've just gone wow I've just I've scored away at Man City because that was the thing for me uh, as a kid my first goals came at the Dell yeah. and it's okay in, the, in, your, in your home pitch you know you've got 95% of the fans all wanting you to do well it's different going away and scoring goals at big grounds away from home so for you to do that on your first your first Premier League yeah. um, appearance must have just given you so much no, belief no it did it did and I gave the team belief as well I think they mm. I think we were one nil down. Really a really bad mistake that we lost the game to as well, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think it was a cross and just 
got deflected. It didn't get cleared middle. very well, yeah, did it? Just, I just, can't remember who it was. And we could have won it. We could have won it. But it, like you said, it's just the belief. Like you, instead of thinking these are seven foot giants that you can never get, like get it in in amongst them. You, you're as good as them. Like that's why you're on the pitch with them. So yeah. go and give them a game. Like if you if you if you think you're defeated before the game, then you will probably have a bad debut or a bad game, or you will get um, the opposition will get the better of you. So as well as reminiscing about your careers, each LaPod, we're going to set you a bit of a challenge. And today I've asked you to send out a bit of a bizarre question to three teammates <laughs> and see what they say. What, what did you put out there? What was the question? OK, so the question I put out there to uh, James Beatty, Franny Benali and Wayne Bridge was uh, high power, advice needed. Just been asked to go in the jungle as a late substitute. Money is decent, but I'm very scared of creepy crawlies and can't eat them grubs and stuff. Do you think I should do it? Uh, and can which, we just clarify straight away? You've got a phone call so, from Bridgie. So, well, first of all, I got a text back from Bridgie, which just said yes, with about seven exclamation marks after it. And the second after that landed, he rang me up and uh, I proceeded to have a five minute conversation with him about how good the jungle was because obviously he went in there. And, uh, Did and you tell him that you're not going? He was telling me that I was. <laughs> that I should really do it. And I let him speak for five minutes without actually telling him that it's just a wind up. <laughs> In fact, I don't think I'm still going to tell him and, uh, and wait and see when the, when it actually comes on the telly and he's waiting for me to go in there. <laughs> He'd be waiting for you to jump out the helicopter. Where are you? I'll what what other text. responses? What did you uh, get? So uh, the other response I got, Beats hasn't responded yet, but Franny, Franny responded uh, as you do because he's the nicest man in the world, Franny. He just, uh, mate, that's amazing. You'd be great in there. I know there are things you wouldn't like, but watching it for all these years, most of the people that go on it say it was the most amazing experience they've ever done. I'm now going to have to tell him. Oh, uh, no, that, don't yeah. tell him. No, I, well, I, he's having a, he's, yeah, I've got to oh, He's tell too him. nice. You can't not tell him. I, I, say, I fell tell him. say, I fell for it. Say, I fell for it. Money wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ricky, we've got to clarify before we see if you've got any answers. You're not the best with technology, so you man, accidentally yeah. sent this as a group message. I did, yeah. So to free players. <laughs> yeah, free legends as well. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, Steve, Stevie G, Adam Lana, and Calvin Davis, and I've put them all in the same group, so they God, know it's God a wind knows, up. yeah, they knew it was a wind-up. <laughs> yeah, much any replies. Away. Yeah, so I've had one off Calvin, come back to me and said, F and go for it, mate. <laughs> Great to get your name out there, and it leads to so many opportunities. Oh, bless him! Oh, yeah. Yeah. can I just say as well, this is a debut show, and you've not sworn once yet. I was I warned know. about your language. You've done well. <laughs> I've been, I've been told just to uh, been on calm his best down behavior. a little bit. Yeah. Would you do the jungle though? Being serious, out of all the things out there, that's the, probably the one thing I would do. Yeah. Would you? Be all right eating yeah. all that stuff. They lose weight out there. That's why you want to go there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. Good day. Um, yeah, it just looks like, like I said, no just come on things. Harry's Heroes with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, it does. You would do it, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you I do? don't think I would. No? No. I've, I've always said, people have asked me that for years. I got asked to do the first, I think it was the first series. My agent, it was just after I retired. Uh, and I got asked about it. And I was like, no, you're right. And then people keep asking me, would you go, would you go on it? And I went, my stock answer is, listen, if ever you see me in the jungle, you know I'm skint. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think they've got enough money that can tempt me to go in there. <laughs> yeah, it's not for me, really. I could yeah. do, I'll tell you what I could do. Um, I could do the Big Brother. Big Brother? They don't yeah. do it anymore. It's finished. I no, that. I could have done that. Oh, I could have done that. Yeah, yeah. No, I would have done that because that's like two or three weeks sat around in a house doing nothing. I'd be brilliant at that. My missus would tell you I am really good at sat in the house doing soddle. <laughs> I know a few people have done a few people have done that, and that one is serious cash. The big yeah. brother pay more than any of them, a lot, a lot more. You could have named your price. Well, yeah, not anymore. See what happens after this, then, isn't it? Yeah, huh? you're, you're sitting around on the pod now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's similar. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Apart from you can go home at the end of it. Yeah. Fees a bit smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, the pod is all about you guys as well, a bit of interaction. So we asked, before we came on to these lovely sofas, any questions from people out on Twitter? And Matt, some interesting ones. Yeah, we've had some good ones. Oh, look. Oh, no. I had on. a few as well. Go Hang on. on. James Beatty's is ringing me. Oh, go on. Go, go on, on, answer it. Go. All right, Zon. 
What's happening? What do you reckon? I was ringing to check whether it was true. Whether, why do you think I would text you if it wasn't true? Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm not, I wasn't sure it was you texting me. Oh, like, right. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I wanted, what? To make, I wanted to make sure before I gave you my answer, you know? Okay, what's your answer? Um, Take your time. What, yeah, what, what do you want out of it? Money. Money? <laughs> Cash, of course. Do it, then. <laughs> I, think, I, think good, I think you'd be good on there, man. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think? Do you think people would like me on there? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. You don't. You don't think they'd think I was a bit of a lazy? Bit of a. Le- no, I just got to get involved a bit, aren't you? Get on. Get on. I don't know. Whatever you like doing, just get on the fire duty or something. Everyone's a <laughs> pyromaniac, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. I'll take your I'll take your views into consideration. You, I'll let you know I'll let you know what happens. Oh mate, that's that's quality that. I reckon you'd be good on there, mate. Serious. Thanks, mate. Get some f***ing creepy crawling <laughs> down here. Come on. Oh, signal's gone. No. Oh. He's off. gone. Oh. We got the gist of it. Though. We might have to bleep out a bit of the language, but know, either yeah, creepy yeah. crawlies. Uh, I knew there was going to be some Fs coming out there when Pete was speaking to me. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you he thinks that. I should do it. Yeah, he said people would really like you, which is nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice. Isn't it? Yeah, of course they yeah, would he's like got you. To say that he wants favours from me all the time. <laughs> okay, what other messages? My you get? question to Ricky. Well, it's not mine. It's Sam Oatley's. In hindsight. Does Ricky regret his dream move and would he have preferred to have seen his career end with us? In hindsight, so knowing that I've got hindsight, uh, yes, I do. Um, well, I always come back to would I regret it more if I didn't go? And I can't, without a doubt, if I stayed at Southampton and I turned down the move to Liverpool, there'd probably be more regret. Because I would always think, what if? What if? Yeah, what if? Absolutely. absolutely. So as much as I, I'm devastated the way I, it could have been at Southampton and I would have loved to have retired at Southampton and, and finished my career, um, it would have been a lot worse if I, if I didn't take the, the move and see what happened. Fair enough. I think this question might be because of what uh, I tweeted whilst we were in Macau. Oh, right, this year. okay. Uh, what is your usual McDonald's order? <laughs> Large Big Mac meal. <laughs> Large Big Mac meal, Diet Coke, and two burgers. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That was a proper feast that it we had is, out of yeah. the cow. I mean, I'm not normally, uh, this will surprise a few people, I don't actually eat McDonald's that often. So if somebody was to say, what's the most common thing you eat at McDonald's, it would be a sausage and egg McMuffin. Because at breakfast at McDonald's... Well, funnily enough, the next LaPod is, is about rate. diet and nutrition, so we can talk all about your love of McDonald's. Oh, right, Let's cool. get through a couple more of these questions. Hold on. Okay. Here you go. Uh, will Ricky have it all? This one. Would you have preferred to win the FA Cup or Division 1 title back in your day, Matt? Ooh. That's a good question, actually, because the FA Cup, growing up as a kid, for me, mm. the FA Cup was massive. Um... I, I would probably say, do you know what? I, I I probably would say the FA Cup lifting the trophy at Wembley. Um, as, as a kid and growing up in the seventies, that would have been the ultimate. Yeah, that would have been the ultimate. That probably would have been even felt even better than lifting the first division title. I think. Yeah, the it FA was Cup that big. was massive back it then. It was that big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to, to you know to growing up as a kid, yeah, that was my, that was my dream to play at Wembley. It wasn't really my dream to win the first division title. I never had huh. a dream to win the first division title. That's why I joined Southampton. Walking out of the old um, Wembley. Yeah. <laughs> but walking out of the old Wembley yeah. and, and going up the steps. And yeah, that would have been amazing. Yeah. And that question was from Mike Ludlam. So I've, uh, I've got one from Stephen Rule. Um, and it's a good one because it says, who would take a penalty if we were both playing on the pitch at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> How would we do that? I mean, I would always respect my elders, do you know what I mean? So, Good answer. <laughs> I mean, I would normally but, say... But I would also respect the fact that you didn't miss a single penalty for this football club. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you do have you do have the upper hand at this football club. Would you club. take one each? Uh, you Alter- one, alternate. One, alternate. Would you alternate? Would you have that? I was with you. Would you? No one else. Yeah, I I I, I have to say uh, that's probably true for me. I don't think I can think of anybody else who I would do that for. Yeah. <laughs> but I would do it for him. Rock paper scissors, not that one. Probably take that's the rubbish. first one. I'll, I'll, I'll let him take the first one, but as long as I could take the next one, yeah, I'd, I'd be completely fine with that. We'd have to do the same with free kicks as well, around the box. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm with that>. <laughs> <laughs> Any time in your careers where you did have a bit of a Barney with someone on the pitch? No, I'm taking an arm. I had it. a brilliant one with Gooley. I told you this, didn't I, the other week? Yeah, you Gooley mentioned used, that, yeah. Gooley used to want uh, the pens all the time, especially if we were winning. Um, uh, well, you've scored two. Can I can I have this one? I was like, no, Gooley. I'm <laughs> I'm on I'm on them. I take I take the pens. That's my job. And it's for, for an attic. He was like, oh, and he'll go away swearing and cursing, like calling me like greedy so and so or whatever. <laughs> so really? uh, I, yeah, yeah, he used to get really upset. Like he really no wanted the pen, and I would I would never I wouldn't give it to anyone, not let alone Gooley. come back from 2-1 down away and um, we equalised the pen and then we got a pen in the last minute and so I've took him the ball and I've gone Gooley do you want do you want the pen he's gone no 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 <laughs> oh brilliant <laughs> no 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 no. You, you, you take it you take it. are you sure are you sure he's like yeah 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 no no you take it alright all right, okay no. as if to say don't ask again mate yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't ever do that that was a job interview for him and he bottled it yeah Matt, I, I, for want you, a, I want a competition in training to actually become the penalty taker. Right. We actually had a, a proper competition in training when I was t- t- 20, I think I was. Um, and I, I won the competition. I didn't miss a single penalty. And uh, and so it was just... So if you given. didn't win that competition, you wouldn't. You no. might not have been on the pens? No. Nope. Oh, my word. It wouldn't, have, you know, it wouldn't it might... have been long before you got on the pens, though, surely. No, it wouldn't have been longer, I don't think. Um, Shearer used to like to take him as well early on, but I didn't let him. He only took him when I was injured, yeah. Or when I wasn't in the team, so uh, and he missed one when I was out of the team. Did he? Yeah, so I was straight back on him. <laughs> Did uh, you feel a lot of pressure with pens? Because obviously you're the you're the don when it comes to penalties and so forth. Well, did your teammates almost? Ex- that's all right. Matt will score. Ricky will score. Um, yeah, they never used to say that to my face um, about that, but I've sp- spoken to a few of them since then. Um, and the, and they all went. I, I never used to bother following up from penalties. Never used to go and try and follow <laughs> up in case the goalie saved it. So they didn't bother. But I never had a, a single player in in all the forty eight penalties I took. I never had a single player come up to me and ask if they could take it. I had one of them moments in my early career at Stockport. Uh, it was with Jim Goodwin. He was a, another midfielder, and it was remember back in the day when a penalty take hadn't been named so it was literally whoever got the football first oh. <laughs> and the ball's gone to the and he's running for it so I'm running for it <laughs> and he's got it first and uh, so I'm going Jim I take all I take all the set pieces give me the ball he's like no F off <laughs> like no Jim you're not taking it so I would literally he's put the ball down I'm, uh, he, he wants to put the ball down I'm stood on the on the, on the spot <laughs> going no it, I'm taking it I'm taking it so in the end, he's telling me to f- too many times, and I felt embarrassed, and I just I had to concede because he had the ball. Because he had it. He had the ball. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Yeah, and I had to I had to give way. I was devastated. Um, but it, it didn't take me long to get on them. I kept on like I was I was basically a ghoulie, but eventually <laughs> I did get on the the pens at Stockport. But yeah, that was an embarrassing embarrassing moment. Yeah, without a doubt. A good ghoulie. Yeah. And you only said. <laughs> Three times, <laughs> so well done. <laughs> See, I, I hadn't said it until you said it before. Know. Never mind. <laughs> well, that's it for for the first Lepod. Uh, next time out, we're going to be talking all things nutrition and diets, so uh, you won't want to miss that. Wow, brilliant. <laughs>